A very warm welcome to our online service this morning. We are delighted that you are able to join with us. Today we rejoice in all of God's good gifts, in the abundance of creation and all that sustains us and all God's children in life. As we give thanks for all we receive, we pray for a just world in which God's gifts are shared for the good of all. And so, a moment of silence before we begin our worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The earth has given her increase. God, our God, has blessed us. And now our prayers of penitence. Let us confess our forgetfulness of the needs of the poor and repent of the ways in which we waste the resources of the world. God has blessed us, but still God's children go hungry. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God has blessed us, but still the poor cry out for justice. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. God has blessed us, but still we see inequality and oppression in the earth. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Collect for Harvest Eternal God, you crown the year with your goodness, and you give us the fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory, for the relief of those in need, and for our own well-being. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We hear our first reading. The reading is from the 26th chapter of the book Deuteronomy. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God has given you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the fruit of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God has given you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number. And there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labour on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power, and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now, I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God, and bow down before the Lord your God. 
then you together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. For the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Alleluia, alleluia. Lift up your eyes and see that the fields are ripe for harvesting. Gather the fruit for eternal life. Alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint John. Glory to you, O Lord. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my lips, the meditations of our hearts, be now and always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I love Harvest Thanksgiving, but it is worth remembering that Harvest is the Johnny-come-lately of the great agrarian festivals. Harvest Thanksgiving traces its origin to a Victorian priest, the Reverend R. S. Hawker, who chose the first Sunday in October as a Christian response to the largely secular and somewhat raucous harvest home celebrations in rural communities. It quickly caught on as a religious festival, and so here we are today. But there are three older festivals than harvest. The first is Plough Monday, which celebrated the return to work after the 12 days of Christmas. In medieval times, a plough was brought into the church overnight, and a special candle, the plough light, was lit. On the morrow, the plough was blessed by the priest, and then taken to the fields to begin the season of ploughing and sowing. In Victorian times, this was transferred to the Sunday, hence Plough Sunday, the first Sunday after Epiphany. The second is the Regation Days, the three days leading up to Ascension Day. These were days of intercession for God's blessing on the land and the crops. This practice goes back before Christianity to Greco-Roman religion, when processions were held and the gods were invoked to prevent blight 
and pestilence. So at Rogation there arose the tradition of beating the bounds of the parish and praying for God's blessing on the land, on the fields, in the hope of the harvest to come. Again, this was often kept on a Sunday, hence Rogation Sunday, the Sunday before Ascension Day. The third festival was Lamas, or Loaf Mass, held on the 1st of August, when the first fruits of the wheat harvest were taken, and from them a loaf of bread was baked and brought to the church. This ancient tradition reflects our first lesson today from Deuteronomy 26. Here the ancient Israelites brought a basket of the first fruits of the produce of the land and presented it to the priest who placed it before the altar. The symbolism was striking. It was the Lord who had given a fertile land to Israel a land flowing with milk and honey. All things come from God, and by giving the first fruits back to God, it was a powerful statement of dependency, of gratitude, of giving back before receiving. It is a godly principle. God is worthy of the first fruits, the first portion of what he himself has given, not the last portion, the dregs, the loose change, once we have taken all our fill. This is true religion, where God comes first. God should be the beginning of our giving, not an afterthought. Lamas died out after the Reformation, but Hawker adapted it to celebrate the completion of the harvest. And so today, at the offertory in St Andrews, we will bring forward the harvest loaf to the altar. It's behind me on the high altar now. It is a loaf in the form of a wheat sheaf, together with the obligatory harvest mouse. As bread, it symbolises the entire harvest, the harvest of the land and of the seas. It represents all that we need to sustain our life, for bread is the stuff of life. Indeed, in the Lord's Prayer we pray, give us this day our daily bread. Here bread stands for all sustenance. The Greek word that we translate daily is unusual, epiousios. Scholars debate its meaning. One likely meaning is this, give us this day the bread that we need for today. In other words, give us today our needful bread enough bread for today, for we must trust God for tomorrow. This is a spirituality that sees each day as precious, for life itself is precious, and it warms against excess. Of course, in Britain we are fortunate, even allowing for the severe drought of this past summer in the south, and our concerns and worries for the farming industry in these difficult days, we still have a fruitful land. And if erratic and severe weather is a sign of human-induced climate change, then notwithstanding that, through the commitment and hard work of our farmers, we can be truly thankful that the land still yields abundantly. But we know that the challenges of providing daily bread 
for all God's children in every part of the world. For the earth can be scorched or drenched or burnt as well as the wars and corruption and incompetence that keep so many under the curse of poverty and want. But our harvest loaf placed before the altar reminds us of a deeper significance of the meaning of bread. Today's Gospel points to an even deeper longing in human hearts than physical hunger. The crowds had eaten their fill of the loaves and fish, and yet still they were hungry. They sought Jesus, for there was a spiritual hunger that he alone, through his word, could satisfy it a spiritual poverty that only he could enrich. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. For Jesus himself is our true bread. And to remind us of that fundamental truth, he gives himself to us under the forms of bread and wine, food and liquid, wheat and grape, to remind us that in him our souls are fed, our thirst is quenched. Indeed, this bread and wine are his very body and blood, given for the life of the world signifying that his very self, his very life, becomes part of the substance of our own mortal bodies as we take and eat and chew and drink and swallow. The sacrament is the pledge of our total union with Christ our Lord whose life dwells not only with us, but in us, inseparable from us. How wonderful this morning we bring together our needs for physical and spiritual sustenance, for the bread of earth and the bread of heaven, for bread that remains fresh only for a time, and bread which endures, is eternal, and can never perish. And remember, harvest thanksgiving draws on Lamas, to remind us that God is the source, the one who gives thirst. He gives to us long before we give anything back, and far more abundantly. Let our worship today be an expression of the first fruits, and that will be symbolised in church, as we will offer to God our substance, our money, as we bless the collection. We will bring forward the gifts of bread and wine, bits of creation, that God will transform by his Holy Spirit to become our sacramental spiritual food. And we will bring up a loaf of bread and some of the harvest gifts that will go to support the work of West Northumberland Food Bank. Not to boast before God of our own efforts, but rather to say to him, all we receive, all we receive, comes from you, our good creator, because you are love, a good father to us all, the source and giver of every good gift. And then we will pray our Eucharistic prayer, our great thanksgiving, 
and as God shares the gift of his Son Jesus with us, we feed on him by faith with thanksgiving and we are satisfied. So this week, reflect on your daily bread. It teaches us all that we need to know. And so we pause while we reflect on the words that David has shared with us. And now we pray. Let us offer our prayers to God for the life of the world and for all God's people in their daily life and work. God, the beginning and end of all things, in your providence and care, you watch unceasingly over all creation. We offer our prayers that in us and all your people, your will may be done according to your wise and loving purpose, in Christ our Lord. Lord of life, hear our Lord. prayer. We pray for all engaged in research to safeguard crops against disease and to produce abundant life among those who hunger and whose lives are at risk. Prosper the work of their hands and the searching of their minds that their labour may be for the welfare of all. Lord of Wisdom, hear our prayer. We pray for governments and aid agencies and those areas of the world where there is disaster, drought and starvation. By the grace of your Spirit, touch our hearts and the hearts of all who live in comfortable plenty, and make us wise stewards of your gifts. Lord of all justice, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who are ill, remembering those in hospital and nursing homes, and all who are known to us. We pray for all who care for them, Give skill and understanding to all who work for their well-being. And we pray for all those on our bulletin prayer list. Lord of all compassion, hear our prayer. We remember those who have died, whom we entrust to your eternal love, in the hope of resurrection to new life. Lord of all peace, Hear our prayer. We offer ourselves to your service, asking by the Spirit at work in us, others may receive a rich harvest of love and joy and peace. Lord of all faithfulness, hear our prayer. God of grace, as you are ever at work in your creation, so fulfil your wise and loving purpose in us, and in all for whom we pray, that with them and in all that you have made, your glory may be revealed, and the whole earth give praise to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So let us take these concerns and prayers to God the Father, in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So thank you for joining us for our service this morning. If you feel that you would like to join us for in-person worship, we meet at 10am for communion on a Wednesday and a Sunday.
Sunday morning, you would be most welcome. Our river service and informal service takes place this afternoon. This month we are reflecting on the question, does God listen? Why not come along and find out? Please look at the bulletin and the website for information about the various other events that we have on. Church is open every day from 9.30 to 4.15. If you'd like to come in, light a candle and reflect in a quiet space. As we end our time of worship, we ask that we may know the Lord's presence in all that we do this coming week. God the Father, who created the world, give us grace to be wise stewards of his creation. Amen. God the Son, who redeemed the world, inspire us to go out as labourers into his harvest. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, whose breath fills the whole of creation, help us to bear his fruits of love, joy and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Tend the earth, care for God's good creation, and bring forth the fruits of righteousness. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. God.